just like that. Hey folks, Captain Mike here from Salty Cake. And today we are south of Martha's Vineyard out jigging for tuna. Now it's early August, so the cool part of saying jigging about tuna south of Martha's Vineyard is it could be either a bluefin or a yellowfin tuna. And this is my favorite time of year because the water heats up. You got warm water eddies coming in, butting up against the cooler northern waters. And with that, you might find some mahi-mahi, you might find some yellowfin tuna, albacore tuna, all kinds of fun pelagic stuff in addition to the bluefin tuna that we're so used to here on Cape Cod. So the name of the game today is working the tells, following what mother nature tells us, trying to catch this fish that just hit my jig. And uh, it's a little windy today, so we're just slipping out, getting the job done, and we're gonna slip right back. So we pushed a little further than we intended today. We're in a little bit of deeper water. We're in 170 feet. And we are vertical jigging for a mix of bluefin and yellowfin tuna. Now, we're in an area, and I don't fully understand, but the bait and the tuna are holding in a certain patch. And uh, so the name of the game today is to make a series of runs just upwind or up tide, in today's case, together, upwind and tide from the spot, and then make a series of drifts. Um, you know, in this situation, um, you know, we've identified from the fish finder and looking at the tells that uh, there are definitely sand eels in the area. And so we're gonna be fishing two jigs, a sand eel jig, a hoagie sand eel jig, a heavier jig, that's our fast jig, and the ho hoagie harness jig, which is our slow jig. And uh, we're just going to work the jigs, make the drifts, see how it goes. So you'll notice Jack and I are fishing very differently, even though we have the same outfits. I have the, we're fishing fast and slow. I have the Hoagie Harness Jig, which is a very slow retrieve bait. I'm just fishing it slow and lazily making that bait sort of dance and slow dance and dart down near the bottom. Whereas Jack is fishing the hoagie sand eel jig, more like a knife jig, same down to the bottom, bringing it up and down, up and down, up and down throughout the water column. And we're seeing marks of fish, some just hanging right tight on the bottom and then others throughout the water column. So with these two methods, fishing fast and slow, I'm working the low game on the bottom and Jack's covering all over on the water column. Now, more often times than not, one technique will outfish the other, and then we'll just switch over to both the same lure. But for now, we're covering all levels in the water column. It's funny, the harness jig almost, the slower you fish it, I feel like the more action it has, that tail is so soft. When you drop, it's just gonna have a very slow and natural undulation in the water. It almost looks like I'm not taking what I'm doing very seriously, but that's how these baits like to be fished. Nice and slow, just like a big oceanic sand eel, wounded, sort of lost its way. Easy snack. Jack, on the other hand, is fishing super fast and trying to draw that reaction strike all throughout the water column. Now, as I get a little scope out outboard of us, what I like to do is reel up and repoint it and start over. Now, if you get a hit on the drop, oftentimes it's very subtle. So if you picture this soft bait going down to the bottom and a fish grabbing it from under, if it comes up while he gets it, this really the net effect to your, the net impact to your outfit is your line just stops going out. Almost feels like you hit bottom, but it's not a big explosive hit like Jack is going to experience with that sandy old jig fish super fast. So when I let this out, I'm paying attention to my line. And if it stops before I'd expect it to, I'm gonna lock down that bale and crank it in. Yeah. 
ways. So with the wind and tide together, we had to upsize our jigs. So we started with a six and a half ounce sand eel jig, upgraded to the eight and a half ounce. So you got a little better angle on the fit on the on the drop. Perfect, perfect keeping size. There he is. There's the uh, promised boat run. Here I have the Hoagie System jigging rod. As you can see, it's a nice parabolic action outfit here. I have it rigged with a Stella 18,000. This little guy here. Got this guy boat side, just gonna gaff him in the head here. And here he is. So fish number one, not a bad way to start the day with this, I don't know, call it a 45, 50 pound yellowfin tuna on the hoagie sand eel jig, fast retrieve. Time to get back at it. So this is what we're looking at in terms of marks today. Now these are 40 to 50, in some case 60 pound tuna. And you'll notice how small these little marks look. If you look at the scale, you know, you're in 170 plus feet of water. So a lot of folks will see the small targets like that and not realize that that's indeed, you know, what we're targeting. They seem big to us above deck, but in the scale of 170 feet, those are good, good marks. Those are real good marks we just went over. So we're just gonna go upwind a little bit. We're gonna drop the jigs and see what we can do. When you do hook up, this rod can put some serious boost to a fish. Now, I would not call this a light tackle outfit by any stretch, but it's light in your hands, light in your arms to fish. Well, there we go, tight. And just like that, you can see that parabolic action. This is a decent fish. And uh, yeah, not much else to say about that. So this fish wanted the heavier jig. The wind's picking up, getting heavier and heavier. Tide still, still running. We're drifting a million miles an hour. Well, this is just a little guy. Well, how do you do? <laughs> this is one angry tuna. This is probably the smallest. Can't even tell if he's a bluefin or a yellowfin yet, but he is ticked off. So I'm gonna release this fish. The beauty of a single hook is I can pop it any second I want with this de-hooker. So I'm just gonna swim it a little bit, make sure he's strong. Grab the hook, give it a pop, off it goes. So the takeaway for today is listen to your weather forecast, which, well, we knew the forecast. The forecast for today was to start out with greasy calm conditions, which it did, then the weather service advertised 15 to 20 in the afternoon, which it is. We're about 60 miles at this point from down Thinner Harbor. So we're gonna take this quick sea escalation as our cue to head for the barn. So we're gonna go through our gear list back at the dock. All right, let's break down the tackle now that we're back at the dock. Now, so here's the outfit that we're looking at here. Um, this is a traditional spinning jigging outfit. Now this particular rod, it's the Hoagie System 
tuna jigging rod. It's five feet nine inches, so it's short and compact. Uh, one thing about um, our spinning outfits for jigging is I like a shorter butt. It's easier to work in a boat in a compact situation, like on a small center console like mine. Better for fighting. I'm a, I'm a fighter off the hip or a belt myself. So the shorter butt gives you more ergonomics for fighting the fish. An extended foregrip, it's got that classic vintage style grip. And you know, the extended foregrip gives you different ergonomic positions while fighting the fish. Now, the outfit itself is very parabolic in nature. And so it quickly goes into a bend, but that doesn't mean it's not a heavy duty rod. It's a car carbon fiber outfit. And so you can really put the boots to pretty much any tuna that you're willing to catch on an outfit this size. Um, you know, today we were catching 40 to 50 pound yellowfin tuna, but you know, these outfits go toe to toe to tuna, you know, up to 72 inches. Now, <clears throat> for the reel, that's personal preference. Um, this particular outfit, I have the Stella 18,000. I have some outfits with the 20,000. I have some outfits with the 14,000 class reel. Point is, this outfit can accommodate a wide range of sizes. And uh, so, here I have the 18,000 where we were today. There were a few toads mixed in, very big, even some giants and smaller fish, you know, in that 60 inch class, smaller fish in the 40 inch class, some smaller fish all the way down to, you know, the 20 pound class, 10 or 15, uh, real little. And so point is this outfit is suitable for all that, that wide range of sizes. And uh, so for line, I have a hundred pound test, hollow core, Jerry Brown in, uh, today I have a jigging wind-on leader. This one happens to be a BHP uh, wind-on leader. It has a 130 pound test, which is a little bit overkill for today, but there were some larger fish mixed in. So I wanted to have a leader heavy enough for me to put the boots uh, to land a fish quickly. I'm a big proponent of landing fish quickly if I know I'm gonna release them. So I tend to err a little heavier on the leader and I'll downsize if I'm finding the fish are leader shy. Um, so that brings me to the terminal connection to this hoagie sand eel jig I have. Now, this is how I also rig uh, a number of my casting outfits. I crimp on the, again, this is 130 pound test fluoro. I'll crimp to a small, um, you know, crane swivel and I put a little piece of chafe gear just to make sure that fluorocarbon line over a long battle the you know long duration um, just doesn't chafe through and pop out and uh, you know this is a heavy duty 160 pound test crane swivel to a split ring heavy duty split ring and this is what I connect my jig to now this combination serves a couple of purposes one it's an easy swap out with a lure with the heavy leader with my handy dandy split ring pliers I can pop off this jig put on a new jig, different color, switch to a soft plastic, whatever. So it's easy swap out. And then for the run in, it's, a, you know, this is a heavy jig, so I can pop the jig off easily so it doesn't bang or beat up the rod if I don't have a jig sleeve. But this combination also, in addition to being an easy swap out situation, you can see with the swivel in this connection, a fish during the battle can't get extra purchase on it and it just minimizes any leverage the fish can have to pull or break a hook or a knot or anything in the equation. So now we're down to lures. So let's take a minute to deep dive on the lures. So we were fishing with two lures today, the Hoagie Sand Eel Jig and the Hoagie Harness Jig. And this happens to be in a sand eel color. Now, uh, why do I have two jigs on? Well, it really has to do with presentation. Um, a soft bait like the Hoagie Harness Jig is a bait that I would associate with fishing very slow. A, a heavy metal jig, such as this Hoagie Sand Eel Jig, is a jig that I would associate with fishing at high speed. So we're fishing literally fast and slow today. And so one thing we noticed early on while we were studying all the tells is they were fishing sort of all levels in the water column. There was some fish grubbing on the bottom, fish higher up, fish in mid-level. And so whenever I arrive on scene, 
and sort of filter down the different tells to what I'm looking at. Um, what I don't know until it's trial until I actually put lures in the water is how they want the presentation. So today we had two anglers, and so to me it was a no-brainer have a slow harness jig down deep and a faster sandy eel jig where we're going to work all levels in the water column. And there's really two color types when it comes to lures. You have an imitator and you have an attractor. Now we knew today that fish were keyed in on sand eels, so olive and silver are very imitative colors. And so here I have my harness jigs. Now the harness jigs are all airbrushed. You can see this one's caught a few fish. They're all airbrushed and they have really good optics. So you're fishing this lure slow, so if a tuna does get a good look at the bait, you know, it's, it's worthy of a good look. It's airbrushed, it's a beautiful lure, highly colored. And, uh, you know, soft bait, when you fish it slow, it's gonna have that real natural undulation in the water. You can see how soft these tails are. So if you're fishing it slow, it's just gonna have that long, you know, fluid undulation in the water. It's gonna be a very sexy presentation. And uh, so generally speaking, if I'm fishing soft baits and I'm fishing them slow, that's what I'm gonna air on an imitative color. And um, so the sand eel jigs, this is my, my big gun bag. Here um, I have my pink, my green, and my olive. And we were sticking with the olive today because that's what worked. But there's days where the tuna just get really, I don't know, high maintenance for lack of a better word. And that's a situation where I'd switch to a more high vis color, like in this case I have in the bottom of my roll up bag here, the pink or even the green. Uh, we also noticed when we were looking at the fish finder, there was certainly big plumes of sand eels, but there were mackerel sort of balling up the sand eels as well. So that's why I like to have the, the, you know, the green sand eel jig as well. Now at Hoagie, our slogan is literally fish smart, fish simple. So in the sand eel jigs, we just have three colors. We have an imitative sand eel, the olive pattern, mackerel pattern, and then an attractor paint pattern. So as far as gear goes, keep it simple. We're fishing fast, we're fishing slow. We, today, they, we didn't get past imitative colors. They wanted the olive. And um, we figured out from fishing two lines that they wanted the faster jigs. But that was today. Tomorrow could be a different story, so it's good to start with one of each, like we did today.